all this stuff going on with all these bank closes, uh, all these closing of banks, and all the stuff that's happening, it, it's really reminiscent of what happened, you know, during the whole 2006, 2008 financial debacle there, and prior to that, you know, in the 80s, um, just a little bump there in the 90s, and then, you know, you got your Great Depression and the stuff in the 70s, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. I'm just, I know I've always heard rumblings of a bank holiday in other countries that have done bank holidays and closing of the banks. Uh, back with FDR, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, when he was here, the, the uh, teacher's hero, the teacher, I say teacher, I say that lightly, the K-12 through babysitter's hero, um, if you've been in indoctrination camps, K-12, through and universities, you'll, you'll see that that's the case. It's, it's the teacher's hero. Yeah, and like I said, I say teacher, I say that lightly. Um, indoctrination, babysitters basically. And feeding indoctrination information. But any, anyways, um, closing on the banks, how bank holidays, that kind of stuff. To prevent a run on the banks. What's a run on the bank? A run on the bank is when people um, are worried about what's going to happen, worried about the banks, worried about their money, worried about inflation, worried about whatever. And they go to the bank, and they go to the bank, and they withdraw as much money as they can out for cash or other, you know, things that they able to do. But usually it's out for cash because they want the real physical cash in their hands versus the digits because the bank might shut down, the bank might close down, the bank might not, you know, let you take so much out. The bank might limit you to withdrawals, um, even, even deposits, you know, sometimes. But anyways... Bank holiday, so there was a time when the FDR was around and they shut down for a number of days, weeks, whatever, and then they opened back up. Just like nothing happened and now we're good to go and, you know, hurrah. Sorry we had to close down, but it was an emergency. You know, like government always says, it's an emergency, so they'll do whatever they want for the most part because it's an emergency. Who's emergency? Who's calling an emergency? Not you or I, not not anyone else, but the government is. So if they say it's an emergency, they can do whatever they want. Or at least that's what they think and that's what they feel and that's what they're allowed. You know, because no one really resists. And I don't just mean uh, uh, melancholy, quiet, revolt. I'm talking no one really re resists. The population doesn't resist. They just go along, you know, it's just going to get a little warmer. It's going to get a little more freedoms taken away. But that's okay. It's not as good as it was, you know, five years ago, but, but it, it could be worse. It's okay. It's okay. And that's, that's how the majority of the people are. But anyways, so this is just my opinion, my guess. I don't know anything. Just take it at that, whatever. But I'm, I'm wondering, so what happens if, you know, the banks close? By banks, it could be all the big banks, it could be small, little banks, it could be everything. What happens if the banks close? Well, banks close. Think about it. They close two to four, two to six weeks. We'll say. So let's say bank closes for four weeks, and they're like, "We're going to do bank holiday, and we're going to close for four weeks." Well, you can still withdraw up to one hundred dollars weekly up until you know the four weeks is over. But I'm telling you, can't do anything else. You can't. You know, you're limited. ATMs won't work that kind of stuff, you're going to have to come in personally, whatever, or you can't come in personally, only ATMs work, up to $100, la, la, la. Um, so they, they do these four weeks. During these four weeks, everyone else is, is you know, panicking for the most part. A lot of people are because they don't have, they don't have all the stuff. They don't have a, a garden or, or, they don't, or anything else. They're not ready for it. They're used to just using their check card or using their credit card, using whatever, and it's going to be there. So you got to go to the grocery store. They got to get gas. They got to, you know, they blew a tire. They got to get a tire for their car. They got to get medicine for their young child. They got to whatever. The dog needs some stuff or pay for vet bills or whatever. They they can do it all the time. So they're used to that. So why would they prepare for anything else? Because they haven't. So anyways, what they're going to do? <coughs> excuse me. Is that four weeks? What's going to happen is the panic's going to set in, like I said, and during that time, they're going to create more and more and more digits. Who are they? Well, 
the banks, the Federal Reserve, government, all together, are we going to figure it out? They're going to create more and more digits. So by the time they open back up in four weeks, oh, now, now you can come out and, and withdraw whatever you would like, withdraw what you wanted to. We're up and running again. It's good because it was an emergency. We had to do some stimulus package for the banks or whatever they're going to call it. Um, save the population or whatever. Save the babies. And now it's back running. What happened during that four weeks? Well, they made digits. They printed money. Whatever you want to call it. And now, once the stuff starts circulating, the, the currency starts stir circulating again, uh, the money, as they call it, starts circling. You're going to feel it. Not, not fast, but over time, more and more. You're going to feel how much less these items, these digits, these dollars can buy, can purchase, because it, they're being inflated away even more. Because what it was, they shut down for that four weeks, for the most part, limited you, and they made all these other digits out of thin air that don't exist, but there's still the same amount of goods and services out there that hasn't changed, that has not changed at all. But they just gave a whole bunch more digits, more currency, so now everything else is going to take more and more of that currency, more and more of those digits to purchase those goods and services. That's how it works. Period. So, and then, after that four weeks goes, the, the people, you know, most people are going to be like, well, now, now they affected the population again because the population overall is going to be stressed again. There's going to be another bank closure. There's going to be another this or that. Um, what, what, what should I do? And then the talking heads on television, mainstream media, um, your teachers, you know, like I talked about, indoctrination camp, babysitters, will be feeding you garbage that says, well, you have to be in these stocks and bonds and these mutual funds and this and that, and you need to get a 401k, IRA, you need to, well, you know what, better yet, let's create a whole new, whole new savings thing for people out there in case of something like that. It's, it's your emergency savings at the banks. Let's, let's do that and we'll, we'll give you guys a little kickback on it. And that way, next time this happens, if there's another time, you'll have that security. You'll have that, that, what emergency savings in the bank, or whatever you want to call it. They'll make up some other, some other program, I'm guessing, and then those people that are, are freaking out, that are worried, that are stressed, um, they'll, they'll be, oh, okay, we'll just do that again, which has comp accomplished, in my opinion, nothing. Nothing but a false sense of, you know, I'm okay. False sense of, it's, it's, it's good, it's taken care of, it's been fixed. And... Those people, okay, well, the government fixed it again with the savings thing. They're, now they're going to be even better when you're more willing and ready to listen to orders. They're going to be more willing to listen to more and more orders. No matter how ridiculous they are, they're going to listen. And yeah, yeah, because you know what? They figured out this emergency savings thing because in case another thing happens, we've got this now. Sort of reminds me of Social Security. Plain and simple, that Ponzi system. That Ponzi scheme, they call it a system, um, but it's probably going to be right along there. So you won't, you won't have a, a choice, but to save, they'll just take it from you and put it in this bank savings account or this Federal Reserve savings account or whatever. That's just my guess. So as the, the as the population is listening to more and more orders, more and more freedoms being taken away. That's being shouted out by governments and politicians and, you know, um, teachers, like I said, those, those, those people who are babysitters, um, and they have a, a another, better regard for, well, authority really is good. Authority, because they fix stuff. That's what the population is left with. If you're not thinking that and you don't, you don't like that and you don't want to be like that, in my opinion, whether you're on board with me or not with anything I've said, you got to always ask yourself, do I have the things I need to protect myself and my family? If and when these events happen, or if and when other events happen, or whatever, 
doesn't matter. Do I have what I need? So what, what do I need? Do you have a garden? Can you garden? Do you don't have the room? Do you, do you grow um, food plants, vegetable plants, food plants, whatever, in pots in your, your apartment or outside, whatever? Do you have enough canned goods? Do you have food storage, freeze-dried foods, um, MRE, MREs, meals ready to eat kind of deal? Uh, I know there's a whole bunch of places that, that sell those, those totes. You know, these are good for 20 or 40 years. Do you have anything like that? Do you have medicines? Do you have medicines and first aid supplies that you, you may need? Um, do you have gold and silver? Gold and silver. It's my opinion. You need gold and silver. Just me. But I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just, just telling you what I feel. Gold and silver. Absolutely. Even more so than having a whole bunch of digits in the bank, having a whole bunch of digits, you know, on your phone, having a whole bunch of cash, in my opinion. Yes, cash cash is the fastest thing right now to to purchase the things and, and to trade, barter with, absolutely. For the time being. But there'll come a time because cash is being eaten away over and over with inflation like I've talked about, that you're going to need something more stable and then holds a lot more wealth. It holds, holds wealth versus cash does not. Gold and silver. Do you have guns and ammo? Do you have guns and ammo? Do you have guns and ammo to be able to hunt? Do you have access to land? Areas to hunt? If you don't, well, talk to some neighbors. Talk to some, you know, whatever. Some farmers. See if they have access that you could lease from them, that you could just pay him to get access to at, at a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, this day I want to I go here, I want to try to hunt because, you know, my family needs some food. Can I do that during the season? That kind of stuff. Get to know. Figure it out. If you don't have it, do you have access to it? Long, this goes along with community connections and resources. Um, like local farmers, um, local farmers markets, people there, um, to start talking to them. Get to know them. I mean, some of them are farmers. Some of them are, are just, you know, they do stuff gardening. They do other stuff, craft stuff. Get to know some of those people. Some of those, those handy, handy people to have, um, you know, in your, in your circle. Local farmers, like I said, local mechanics, local medical specialists, preferably natural, natural medicine, natural path, people who know about, um, what's here on this planet. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I mean, that's all I had to say, really. But I feel something like this is going to happen, uh, especially especially when they're pushing these emergencies and making this stuff happen, these PSYOPs, in my opinion. And like I said before, probably you know months and months ago, I still, I still have this feeling that there's going to be a major, major thing because they, they want a major emergency to get people to... Go along to listen to follow, and what could be uh, larger? There are probably other things that are larger, but what could be simple and large enough to get reaction? I mean, it would be huge. The blow up like the Hoover Dam, or something that at that level. What would happen? What would happen? Then? I'm just, I'm just asking. There'd be a lot of death and devastation, but I don't wish that on anybody. I do not, but I just have this feeling. I don't know why. Something like that, they're going to push aliens invading us, whatever it is they're going to do, to try to get people to go along harder and harder because the last time worked for the most part, for the most part, but people have smartened up a little bit since then. Now they got to do something even bigger, snap back that control. Anyways, that's all I had to say. Uh, thank you for watching. As always, if you like this, like, subscribe, and stay vigilant about yourself and help your family.